Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Wood, Brass and Glue. I'm Len GX V6 and we are continuing on with the Scottish Maid. Um, just so people are aware of whereabouts we're going to be working, if you've got your plans, um, down here, section 8, and we'll be looking at section 9 as well. Uh, on the model, if I move it over into the light, you can see it a bit better. Uh, you will see that I've already started um, doing the uh, frame uppers. Yes, it's a little out of uh, whack to what the plans say, but you're going to do that on every model you do. You got the plans; they tell you what to do. Um, not necessarily have to do them exactly in this order, uh, and the reason being is it's no different if you do the frame uppers now than if you do the rubbing strikes it's not going to make a difference it's not a, a, a structural problem uh, the only ones where you really really have to follow are putting the framework the actual frame to the keel uh, the inner planking the outer planking they have to be done in that order because well you're not going to put the outer planking on nothing uh, oops <laughs> but while you're waiting for other pieces to dry you can actually move on and do other bits and pieces I know a lot of people by now who have the model have probably looked at this and gone well you know what we, we can make the various bits and pieces of hardware that actually go onto the deck and you'd actually be correct in fact that's a very smart thing to do and the reason I haven't done it is because I'm going to do it in the video and yeah you can see where I'm going but because I already plan to do um, uh, plans 8 and 9 anyway in this video in fact I might even do number 10 if I can find where number 10 has disappeared to I really hate how these are done oh yeah 10 yeah, you never know we might do 10 and 11 as well who knows anywho I'll get to that point very soon. Let's get to this point. Right. Oh yeah, the, um, I might as well show you. The stand that I'm actually using at the moment uh, is from JCar Electrics. I know you can pick these up at JCar. I actually got this from Dick Smith when Dick Smith was still a thing. Um, this is actually electronics um, stand. Uh, essentially, it had alligator clips up the top here. Uh, to hold the PCB and this piece down here had a um, magnifying glass so you can see what you were doing um, I've retrofitted it it's got a really good solid steel base to it this thing is heavy as hell and I mean I can turn the whole model just like that yeah. you can put the model into a position that you want now you can buy these bases as well uh, from your local hobby store which are specifically designed to take the model ships I do know that uh, Tina uh, Latisa actually make one good luck getting one because our hobby store quoted me I think four months to get one in country <laughs> I was like uh -oh. yeah okay uh, lockdowns pandemic yada 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 just pick your excuse, it's going to come. All right, so let's do the rubbing strikes. Um, and in fact, I'll, I'll just lay the model down like that anyway. Um, can we still see it? Yep, we can, cool. So basically, this is a 2x2 two two walnut, which is what you're going to need. And it goes here, where the transition between the walnut and the uh, malachite is. So, We've got to run it the whole way down to here. Now, I know some people might have sh uh, this done as a sharp edge. Uh, mine's actually quite rounded, so um, I'm going to have to be careful here because I want the rubbing strake to be on this side of the round and not the other side, which also means I need to actually stop it before we get to there. So. What you're going to do, 
other than actually measure this, if I'm going to do a rough measurement, I'm just going to hold it in place, bring it down, okay, that's about where I want to go, and I'm just going to snip off the end. This isn't the full size, and in fact, the leftover um, will fit down the, the uh, stern hand quite nicely. So, don't throw away your leftovers. So what we're going to do is I'm actually just going to quickly cut and shape uh, this end to fit that bow. And it is literally nothing more than we take a little piece out, we put it on the side of the ship, see how it sits. Just a little bit different angle. And it's all about just finding the right angle. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that looks actually quite good. Yeah, that looks in good. Okay, and this is where super glue comes in handy. I know people who, or I've watched videos of people who have built their entire model using super glue. It looks fantastic, but not for me. And I'm going to use super glue this time around quite simply because it dries very, very quickly. It does have a good strength to it when it does dry. And I've just glued my fingers together again. That's fantastic. However, the whole rubbing stroke isn't going to be done with super glue. Okay. What I want to do is just get that to dry so that I can now bend the rubbing stroke back down the length of the ship. I will actually be using the PVA glue as well um, with a paintbrush, wherever the paintbrush is gone. Here it is. Um, I actually use a paintbrush to put PVA on. It saves it going everywhere. Um, but most importantly, I've got to wait for that bit to dry. And we're just going to work our way down the model now. A little bit of PVA, a little bit of super glue. That's all it is. Make sure we get some under there. All right. Now that should be 
says. Back of a random bell, a random boat. All right, so while we wait for that to dry, there's another thing that we can be doing. Because we do have to actually flip this over and do the other side. But we have a set of fenders. So item number 44 in tile eight says we have two fenders. I don't know what these are actually for, by the way. Um, I've gone all over the plans. I've had a look at the pictures. The entire lot normally these would indicate where the anchor would sit uh, when the anchor is stowed and um, the vessel would be moving through the ocean um, these would be sacrificial so the anchor would knock up against these things over time it would knock the wood apart you, you don't bolt them you bolt new ones on um, hence fender it's to protect it however uh, if you have a look at the photos, if you have a look at the plans, uh, the anchor when it's stowed comes nowhere near these things. So, not too sure. I'm more happy to actually put these further forward where the anchor would sit, but I'm not too sure which way I want to go there. So, um, item 44 fenders, they're 15 centimeters long, uh, sorry, 15 millimeters long. They're 1.4, uh, 1.5 by 4 millimeter. That's this one. Um, be careful because you actually have a thicker one as well. Don't, not the thicker one. Oh, not the wider one, I should say. It's the um, smaller of the two. And this will go um, up, roughly up here somewhere. So what we want to do is I'll just grab the calipers and put the calipers there to, yep. Well, that's going to work. Um, so we want one point five. Oh God! Yes, and of course, I put the entire ship in the bloody road. Um, uh, now you need four of these, two for the port, two for the starboard, okay? So we're just going to work on the port side ones at the moment. Um, I'll do the starboard side off camera. There's no use me doing one side and then flipping it over, then me doing the other side, you watching the whole thing and then going, well, you just showed me the same thing twice. Uh, and I've lost my plans. No, no. Where do I put my plans? Ah, so, I have absolutely no idea how we're going to do this. Since the actual, these plans don't show where the fender is. Um, which is uh, a bit of an issue. Actually, it's a very big issue because now we have to actually guess. I hate guessing. I really do. Um, no, we don't actually. Hang on. Where's the. Is that that Coleman? Alright, 
On the telephone. Where am I going? There we go. On the color plan. So, you have a look. Color plan. Okay, this is what I was talking about. You see where the anchor is stowed at the moment? Normally, those fenders would be under that. Or that anchor would be stowed further back. Which is what's leading me to believe that uh, these fenders are actually supposed to be forward. They're too far back. They're not where they're supposed to be. They serve absolutely no purpose whatsoever. Um, so my feeling at the moment is I'm actually going to bring those forward to where the anchor stowage would be. Um, and then when I actually stow the anchor, um, it will actually rest on those. Now I've gone over some of the other models I, that I actually have um, in the house and they all do have these sacrificial fenders underneath the anchor stowage. So I think that's what it's supposed to be. It's just that whoever drew these plans uh, decided that it looked really, really pretty and they were gonna put it there. Um, yeah, uh, as you can see, it serves no purpose. On a ship, one of the important parts is everything actually serves a purpose. So this is the one, this is actually one to one. So if I measure down <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm using it to hold the bloody thing on. And, uh, so, if I measure off the plans from there to there, right, that should be the middle point of the two fenders. So, and of course, they're not long enough. Okay, I might um, hold those over for the other side. Yeah, all right. Well, that sucked. Um, okay, well, we'll do it the other way. Damn, I hate when that happens. So apparently, I have one side higher than the other. That's fantastic. Just make that slightly longer. Yeah, there we go. Right, we can put that back up there. Grab some glue. Grab the paintbrush. Find where our line is. some glue on that. I do need to wash that paintbrush. Now just keep in mind um, these things can be longer ah, perfect excellent so they can be longer than the ball wall they can't be shorter than the ball wall okay going to let those dry. So right now we've just put the fenders in. We've got one lot of the strokes on. Uh, I do need to do the, the back one of course which will uh, go down here. In fact there is absolutely no reason why we can't um, just sort that one out right now. I'm just looking at angles. We get the right angle. Do we even have the right stuff? Is that the right stuff? No. What was that one for? Oh, hang on. That again. Dude, that's that's the other stuff. Dude, what am I doing? Uh oh. And this is why we take it nice and slow. <laughs> Yeah, 
that'll be perfect. And I'm just going to use the um, super glue. No other reason than it's it's going to dry a lot faster, a lot easier, and cut down on the amount of time that it's going to take. Um, and it also means I'm going to glue my finger to the model. So I'm going to let that now dry and um, I'm going to tidy all this up as we go. Once it's all dry, I'll bring it all back and we'll have a look at uh, other bits and pieces. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's actually dry. <laughs> so, from the bow, I'm still getting used to these cameras, but anyway, uh, basically we've got the rubbing strake on, we've got the fenders on, they do need to be cleaned at the top, I'm well aware of that. Running down to the stern with the, if I can put that in correctly, there you go, you can now see the stern rubbing strake is on as well. Now, the transom rubbing strake, the bit that goes here, I am working on that at the moment, trying to work out the best plan for that. I do believe I've actually figured this one out. I do know what it's actually for. Uh, it is a rubbing strake. It goes across the back. Uh, it comes out because it's there to protect the king post, the king post being the top post on the rudder. Um, you use it when you have your um, ship's boat uh, in the water. At night time, if you're alongside or riding anchor, you would put the ship's boat at the stern of the vessel. Uh, noting that uh, where this hatchway is right here, uh, that hatchway actually comes up onto the helm's position. Um, and you could literally walk straight up, look straight down, there's the boat. Instead of having to walk halfway up the ship and then you know try to find the boat and what have you. Even in modern day, we actually put the boat, the ship's boat, down the stern. Uh, and what, it's, what that embellishment on the back is for is to stop the boat actually smacking into your king post uh, and damaging your rudder. Um, so I've seen some photos now of some vessels, that you know, various bits and pieces. I'm not happy with the one in the plan um, because the ones that I have seen um, normally have either eye bolts or cleats uh, down on that embellishment so that you can run a painter line uh, from uh, the, uh, the rubbing strake at the back uh, up to the bow and then you can actually use the painter line to pull yourself along in the boat. Haven't seen anything to indicate that this thing even had yeah, uh, cleats or eye bolts or anything down there. So we'll go with it as we go. Okay, so as I said, you can go ahead uh, with the plans. If you're waiting for other bits to dry, you can do other bits. And what I have actually done, um, if I move it into the camera and get my finger out of the red, um, I've done the top uh, frame tops um, and the pieces that go in the middle. Now, I, if I turn it around the right one, um, you'll see I haven't done the, the bow section yet. And I'm going to show you how I actually did it. So I'll get that out of the road now. To cut these pieces, um, you've got multiple ways of doing it. You can use scalpel, um, various saws, of course. Or my favourite. <laughs> yes, I actually have an electric saw. Um, I picked, this is actually a lathe by the way, uh, this is a mini lathe or they sometimes refer to them as hobby lathes or beading lathes. I picked this one up off Amazon.com, I think it was about 60 bucks Australian. Um, and it actually came uh, with the saw blade and um, that sanding disc that I've been using, that actually fits onto here, that's what it's actually for. So you, you can end up with a, a very nice sander. But things like, it's got a grindstone, so you can do um, beads, you know, various bits and pieces. That, by the way, is a chisel. 
it's just one piece of metal that's been wrapped in leather. Um, a few other bits and pieces come with it, but for the most part, um, yeah, mini lathe, comes with a saw blade, works really, really well. So what do we need? We just need two more. It's quite simple. And yeah, this thing is actually set. Oh, there goes one. Oh, uh, God. Did I lose it? Oh, no, there it is. You got it. Ah. All right, so we'll get that out of the road. Um, I'll find where I put my pliers. Fire, fire, pliers. Put the shake to the top. Turn the drum on. That's one. Yep. Always a good habit if you're using the, you know, various things like Dremels and cutters. As soon as you finish, turn the power off. Because if you're anything like me, you'll forget about it, and then bad things happen. So we've got those. Bit of glue. Bit of glue. Uh, we're going to need that again in a, in a sec anyway. So we'll just put that out of the side. We'll grab this. And we'll put them on. Oh, I'm in the wrong spot. That's in the wrong one. Good on you. That should be up there. Oh. That's not a big issue. What we'll do is we'll put some more glue on anyway. Um, did they... mm. There we go. Yes, thank you. And across the top here because I've already prepped these bits and pieces. Which are these bits and pieces. So this should be the bow piece. Just get that up and in. Yep. And I'm going to be sitting in the middle of that. Oh, where do you come from? Okay. One of the pieces I put on earlier didn't have enough glue, apparently. Jim's fallen off. Which is fine, we can fix that up very quickly. paintbrush. I don't know exactly where this goes because I just saw it. Alright, ta-da! Okay, so the pieces that go in between the frame tops before we finish off this episode. Basically, all I did was I measured it with the calipers. I've got nice solid steel calipers, and this is where they come in very handy. Um, actually, I don't know if we're actually going to be able to see that. 
Put the wood in like that. Grab your blade. And use your blade like a guillotine. And that gives you a nice little piece. Not that I need that piece, but there you go. That's how I made those. Uh, which actually means that every single piece that I've just done then uh, is exactly the same size. And that's what we want. So I'm actually going to let that dry. Next episode, we'll look at doing the gunnel and we will look at the uh, transom embellishment. Uh, by the time I get to do the next episode anyway, I'll have actually figured out the transom embellishment and I'll be able to show you how to build it and exactly where it goes. Uh, at the moment, I'm still a little iffy and I still want to do a little bit more research on that one. So, as per normal, guys, if you love the video, uh, if you like the video, uh, do give me a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. It helps out the uh, YouTube algorithm. Uh, notification button, hit the bell. Uh, comments, as, like always, lots of comments are coming through. Uh, one thing I will point out is I have actually started my own Discord server. Now, if you've never used Discord before, uh, it's a communication system that gamers use. However, it's gone from being this little niche gamers uh, system to a uh, full-blown system that's used by everybody and anybody. Uh, it allows me to put videos and pictures up, but it also allows you to put videos and pictures up, as well as giving us voice communications and uh, text chat. Um, it's not owned by Microsoft and it actually works. A link for that is down below along with the in invite for you. So you can get it on your tablet, you can get it on your mobile phones, you can use it on your computers. I've got it on literally everything. Uh, and I'm on there pretty much every day anyway. So easy to get a hold of me that way. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, fair winds and cold seas.